Are you guys ready to dive into the Word of Life this morning? So for me, the central feature of my testimony, and a testimony is really the story of what God has done in our life. The central feature of my testimony was not about getting set free from drugs and alcohol. I've never even smoked a cigarette in my life. Um, I was pretty lame growing up, in a good way, I guess. But I was, in a Christian way, I was, I was, I was not a, a hellraiser. I was not out partying and, and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So my testimony was really about identity. Because I had no idea who I was. And that loss of personal direction made me desperate to feel like I belonged. Was I an athlete? Was I a ladies' man? Was I a nerd? Yes. Um, future doctor? Was I going to be a historian? Was I worth desiring? Who was I? My heart breaks for young people today. Because there is so much confusion out there. And the reason for that is because they are being taught by people who themselves are confused. People are unsure about gender, about sexuality, race, right from wrong. They're not sure what to believe about history. And people are being taught only to trust in their feelings. With no absolute truths or boundaries. That's a terrifying world to grow up in. You know, if I was a young person today in 2023, to be honest, I have no idea what I would get caught up in. And if you were honest, you would probably say the same thing. Because a lot of us who are older have found ourselves trapped in other things like bad relationships, um, food, social media. Alcohol and drugs, consumerism, or just chasing happiness. It was only when I saw who Jesus is that I began to get a clear picture of who I am. So this morning, we're going to take a look at a tree. Because we're going to start a, a Christmas series called Trees. And the first tree that we're going to look at is a sycamore tree. And for us, the sycamore is going to be a place to see Jesus. This tree is found within a story of discovery. It's in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down, and he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He's gone in to be the guest of a man who was a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give away to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today. Salvation has come to this house, since he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. So the city of Jericho, that's the center of our story today, is very old. It's considered by some to be the oldest continually lived in city on earth. It's also the lowest city on earth, nearly 1,000 feet below sea level. Jericho was the first city conquered when Israel entered into the promised land. Now, by the time of Jesus, this had become a playground 
for wealthy merchants and the aristocracy. It was a favorite resort during the winter months. And it was also a center of trade, which made it a very profitable place for taxation, a perfect place for a tax collector to live. Zacchaeus, the man in our story, was a tax collector. But not only that, he was a Jewish tax collector, which means that he chose to work for the Roman government who was actively taking advantage of his own Jewish people. Zacchaeus was a traitor because he was intentionally exploiting his people. Now, tax collectors made their money by charging extra fees on top of the regular taxes. And as a chief tax collector, Zacchaeus was even further in alignment with the Romans. And he was growing extravagantly wealthy because of the continued subjugation of his people. You could not have found someone who deserved the label of sinner more than Zacchaeus. Because his life was built on openly defying God's word. But how many of you know That Jesus often calls us from the midst of darkness. It says that Zacchaeus was seeking to see who Jesus was. Despite his lifestyle, Zacchaeus was still drawn to Jesus. There was this divine curiosity. I don't care what you have done, where you were at right before you came to church today. Jesus will speak to you anywhere you are. In John 6, it says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. The Father will draw you to himself because the Father loves you. Right now, in the midst of your busyness, work, kids, dating, school, sports, hobbies, just life in general, God is inviting you right now, this morning, to look and to pay attention. Now, ironically, Zacchaeus' name actually meant pure or innocent. What a powerful statement of who Zacchaeus was intended to be. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Zacchaeus wanted a look at Jesus. But we serve a God who looks back. It says that Zacchaeus was small in stature. Now, I don't think Zacchaeus probably enjoyed being short. I doubt this is probably on his list of self-affirmations in the morning when he was encouraging himself in the mirror. I personally have a child who is typically the smallest in any peer group. And she's been that way since she was born a micro preemie 11 years ago. And she's always telling us that she wishes that she was taller. Now, what makes this even more difficult for her is that people, not realizing it, that it bothers her, constantly make comments about her size. Can we just all agree to try to learn a little bit more emotional sensitivity or maybe emotional intelligence and try to make an effort to think before we say things? I mean, I hope you're not one of those people that would say, wow, Tom, I think your nose has gotten bigger since the last time I saw you. Or Cindy, huh, that stomach, are you sure you're not pregnant? I don't know any Cindy's, that's why I use that name. If you are Cindy, I don't know. Stop making verbal observations unless you know your words are going to encourage. I can tell you that when I was a bigger guy, people would just make comments like, wow, You're a big guy. Like, didn't know. Recently, someone that I don't even really know commented on my receding hairline. So, as any good Christian, I just smiled and said, yeah, 
It's just one of those things outside of our control. Kind of like being ugly, right? And they always look at you like, huh? But this is how God often works. He takes the things that we dislike, he takes the things that make us insecure, and he will use them for his glory. God used an element that Zacchaeus could not unsee about himself, and he used it to help him to see Jesus. When I was 12 years old, I envisioned myself being in the NBA. Well, I stopped growing when I was 12 years old, and I have an 8-inch vertical. So that dream went out the window. But God has given me other gifts that I can use to serve him, and God has given Zacchaeus other gifts. So it says that Zacchaeus, in his desire to see Jesus, climbed up into a sycamore tree. Now, I want to show you a picture of a sycamore tree right behind me. Kind of short and squatty, wide, big base, and limbs, large limbs that spread out laterally to the sides. This would have been a perfect tree for climbing, and as you can see from the leaves, it would have also been a good place to hide. A sycamore fig tree is not physically difficult to climb. But Zacchaeus still had to choose to climb it. You following me? Most change that we need in our lives is simple. What makes it not easy is trying to convince our will to do what is right and what is good. Whoever you are, wherever you are, the climb to change is never going to be convenient. And we're going to tell ourselves things like, well, I don't want to get dirty. Zacchaeus was wealthy. He wasn't walking around in scrubs. He had on some nice clothes. It would have been easy for him to say, I don't want to tear my clothes. We might say, you know what? I really have somewhere else I need to be. Or maybe fear will take over and we'll think, you know what? I could fall out of that tree. Because following Jesus requires risk. Or maybe the thing that many of us are more afraid of than anything, what will other people think? These are all excuses. And you know what? When the enemy gets in our heads and we begin to use excuses for reasons not to look for Jesus, those excuses are powerful and they are dangerous. In Luke chapter 14, 16 through 24, Jesus tells us what happens when we give excuses. But Jesus said to him, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servants to say to those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, well, I've bought a field and I must go and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. See, he didn't even ask to be excused. He was already throwing his wife underneath the bus. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry. And he said to his servant, go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame. And the servant said, sir, what you have commanded has been done and there is still room. And the master said to the servant, then go out into the highways and to the hedges and just compel people to come in that my house may be filled. For I tell you, not one of those men who were invited shall taste of my banquet. In other words... When we are unwilling to be obedient to the call of Jesus, our spot at the table will be replaced. Just think about the excuses that we offer about our spiritual growth. I can't go to church today. I mean, it snowed like half an inch last night. It's too cold. It's too nice out. It's windy. Come on. It's weather. It's the Midwest. We're used to it. What about, it's too early. Church is just too early. Well, I'm pretty sure that Jesus was arrested, beaten, tried in court, and sent off to be crucified in the morning. So that one may not hold up for us. How about, 
this has become a new favorite, and I hear this now several times, and I'm not making fun of you, but I am. <laughs> I can't go to church because I was fighting with my spouse. Yes, by all means, stay there and keep fighting, because that's going to make it better. Um, I don't have time. I don't have time for growth track or for a connect group. Well, what are you using your time for that's more important? Or my all-time favorite, I can't serve. You know, I just really need to focus on getting fed. But so does everyone else. And they can't get a bite to eat because you're hogging the buffet. And just so you know, the Sunday service, this is only an appetizer. Serving others is the main course. In John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. So if you want to get a good meal, you want to get over yourself. Jesus looked at Zacchaeus and said to him, You know what? I do not think Zacchaeus expected for Jesus to see him. I think Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, but I don't think he wanted to be seen. His name may have meant pure, but he would have been regarded as anything but pure to his peers. They would have seen him as defiled and disgusting. The tree gave him a good vantage without the risk of being seen. He was a small man in a big tree. He would have been easy to miss. In other words, he was perfectly camouflaged. Camouflage allows us to hide in plain sight. And all of us wear camouflage. Some of us use relationships. Some of us use our sexuality. Other people are going to hide behind their money or hide behind their stuff. For others, they hide behind hu humor or an attitude that they present. Some people rely on religion or coming across as spiritual. Or maybe it's simply putting on a smile and pretending like everything is always okay. Zacchaeus was hiding in a tree, but his everyday camouflage was actually hiding in the world. We hide because we are unsure of ourselves. And we hide because we are actually disconnected from God, and that leaves us with this feeling of shame and being afraid. But when Jesus got to where Zacchaeus was, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. You see, Jesus did not just see Zacchaeus. He recognized him. He knew him. When Jesus sees you, you are not a stranger to him. He knows every hair on your head. Zacchaeus wanted a look. Jesus wanted a a relationship. And now Zacchaeus had to choose. He could have chosen to stay hidden, not only in the tree, but inside of himself. Are you willing to risk being seen? Because if you want to see who Jesus is, you are going to have to be revealed. In James chapter 4, verse 8, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You cannot get close to God without him getting close to who you are. But when Jesus calls you, he sees you for who you actually are. Stripped of the world's baggage. Stripped of the world's influence. Jesus sees you as he created you to be. Not who you've become. When he looks at you, Jesus sees the potential of the new creation. Notice, though, that Jesus told Zacchaeus to hurry. In other words, he told him not to hesitate. When Jesus calls you, that is not the time to hesitate. Because you can easily talk yourself out of it. Because the love of Jesus does not make sense to us. When Jesus calls us in his love, it is unconditional. And we are unused to unconditional love. 
And so it's so easy for us to begin to create a narrative inside of our head for why Jesus would not want us. And doubt begins to develop because doubt is easy. Doubt is always the easy way out. But Jesus calls us to respond to him in faith. Faith is absolute trust in his goodness, not our goodness. And then Jesus said to him, I must stay at your house today. This was no happy accident. This didn't just happen by coincidence. God had a plan for Zacchaeus' life. This was a date on God's calendar. And you know what, guys? You have a date on God's calendar. You need to stop canceling that appointment. You need to stop putting it off. Zacchaeus was ready. And so Zacchaeus received him joyfully. Have you ever been received by someone reluctantly? You know what I mean? So when I was growing up, I was never, I was never someone that received a lot of invitations. I was always someone that would invite people to come and hang out, but I didn't necessarily get invited to hang out. Can you guys relate to that at all? And sometimes I would hear people talking about being, going and doing something, so I would work up the courage to ask if I could be a part of what they were going to do. And then there would be that awkward pause. You know the one I'm talking about where they are inwardly seeking any excuse possible to tell you why you shouldn't come along? And then when they can't find an excuse, they answer and their voice just goes up a little higher and an octave and they're like, sure, I'd love for you to come. That's not a good feeling. Jesus had just invited himself into Zacchaeus' life. And Jesus is trying desperately to invite himself into your life this morning. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he will be with me. But see here. Jesus does not push the door down. He does not blow it off his hinges. Jesus will allow you to keep the door closed if you choose. And keep in mind, Zacchaeus came down and received Jesus joyfully, even though he did not have time to go home first and clean up. He didn't get to go and make that mad dash to straighten things up and put away anything that might be embarrassing or incriminating. How many of you guys love when company shows up unexpected? And you're in your PJs and you haven't cleaned the house in three days, right? But Zacchaeus was able to receive Jesus joyfully because Jesus already knew everything Zacchaeus had done. But that did not define who Zacchaeus was to Jesus. Zacchaeus received him joyfully because Jesus received him unconditionally through his faith. And this freed Jesus to finally become the man Jesus had created him to be. If you will allow Jesus to accept you for where you are right now, you will be empowered by His Spirit to become who He created you to be. You come to Jesus just as you are, and then He gives you the power to change. But, people only receive Jesus joyfully when they are ready to change. If you're not ready to change, and Jesus comes up in the conversation, you're going to feel anxious. You're going to feel intimidated. You might get offended. You will experience feelings of anger or fear or bitterness. And all kinds of justifications will come to your mind of why you shouldn't go to church or why you shouldn't pray or why you haven't been reading your Bible if you're not ready for change. But if you're not ready for change, this morning is the time to be honest, first with yourself and second with Jesus, that you want to be ready to change. Those who saw this happening said that Jesus had gone in to be the guest of a sinner. 
You know what Jesus' answer to that was? Yep. Having lunch with Zacchaeus was a big deal because Jesus was identifying with him. In their culture, when you shared a meal, that person was immediately considered to be part of your circle. Jesus was giving Zacchaeus validity, not as a tax collector, but as a person. And some of us need to get over who we've been and allow Jesus to receive us because he's receiving you, not your past. So in the midst of this, change begins to occur within Zacchaeus' heart. And he makes a statement in front of all of his guests. And by the way, Zacchaeus is very, very rich. And he says, Jesus, I give away half of my goods to the poor. You know what Zacchaeus was doing? He was taking off his camouflage. Zacchaeus was getting rid of the things that he had been using to hide behind up to this point in his life. And he was saying, I don't need this stuff anymore because this is not who I am. I now know who I am. And then he took it a step further. And he said, not only do I give away half of what I have, if I have stolen from any of you, I'm now going to restore it fourfold. Before Jesus came into his life, Zacchaeus openly, continuously broke the law. But when Jesus came into his life, he was now able to live it out. This is what repentance looks like acknowledging our sin and making a change. In Luke chapter 3, verse 8, John the Baptist said that we are to bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And we're not to say to ourselves that we have Abraham as our father because God is able, even from the very stones, to raise up children for Abraham. Now that may not mean a lot to you because you're not Jewish. Well, maybe you are, but I'm not Jewish. But what this is saying is that we do not base our salvation on things like being a good person. And you cannot base your salvation on someone else's faith. I don't care how much grandma went to church. It doesn't do you any good. Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house. Salvation, healing, freedom. All of those things are available to you today. There is nothing, nothing holding you back except you. You can become God's child, but only through Jesus. Jesus said to them, guys, this is his. He is a son of Abraham. Zacchaeus was free to let go of the things that no longer defined him, Because he had been accepted as who he was. Not as a tax collector. Not as some chief bureaucrat. Not as a rich guy. But as a son of Abraham. In discovering Jesus, Zacchaeus finally discovered himself. I chased all kinds of things to be my identity as a young person. And it was not until I discovered Jesus that I finally found who I was called to be. Why did Jesus go through Jericho that day? Why did he stop up and look in the tree? Why did he stop for all people, for a chief tax collector, a traitor to his own people, a man who was given to a life of sin? Because Jesus comes to seek and save the lost. And guys, sometimes we hide ourselves so well that we lose ourselves. Sometimes we do such a good job of hiding that we forget who we actually are. What is your camouflage? Is there anything in your life that you are using right now to avoid being seen? And if there is, Are you willing to give it away? Are you willing to, like Zacchaeus, get really honest with yourself 
and say, I, this is not where I'm supposed to be. This is not who I am supposed to be. I want to be who Jesus says I am. Well, the first step in that is to give your life to Jesus. And you give your life by praying. Uh, you can pray a prayer like this. You can say, Jesus, I have sinned by rebelling against you and by rebelling against your word. Please forgive me and wash me clean in your blood. I believe, Jesus, that you lived a perfect life, that you died on the cross for my sins, and that you have been resurrected from the, day, from the dead, and I believe that someday you are going to return in your glory. Anybody in here believe that? Here's the big part. Jesus, I surrender control of my life to you. And I freely confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you pray a prayer like that, and you give your heart to the Lord, and you give Him control, the Bible says that you are saved. Not after you go to church a certain amount of times, not after you read a certain amount of chapters, not after a certain amount of hours of prayer, that if you pray that prayer, you are saved instantaneously, and heaven explodes in celebration for your salvation. But what about the rest of us? I mean, these messages are great for people that are lost, that need to get saved, but what about the rest of us? What if you have already climbed your tree? What if you have already seen Jesus and you have responded to his offer? Well, you know what? You need to find another tree to climb. Is there only one tree on the path? Is God so small that we only need to be with him one time and then we have him figured out for the rest of our lives? I mean, I don't care if you've been saved for five days, five years, or 50. You constantly need to be looking for new opportunities to be experiencing Jesus in ways that you've not experienced him before. And some of us who are more mature believers, we need to get up and climb a tree for no other reason than because we have grown comfortable. We're stuck in a rut. And maybe as a result of that, we're sliding away little by little from where we're supposed to be. So this morning, whether you're climbing a tree for the first time, or you're willing to climb that metaphorical tree again, Come and get a look at Jesus. Because when you see Jesus for who he is, he will give you clarity on who you are supposed to be. Amen? Would you bow your heads? I'm going to pray for all of us in just a moment. And then when I do that, I want to invite you. If you're here this morning and the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart about anything that you've heard in this message, I want to challenge you not to be concerned what other people are going to think, but I want to invite you to respond to what the Holy Spirit is saying and to come up here to the front. And when you come up here to the front, my wife and I are going to meet you and we're going to just pray with you. We're going to pray with you for the Holy Spirit to solidify what he's begun this morning through his word. Father, I thank you for the truth of your word, and I thank you for how it reads us as much as we read it. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, this morning that you would get down in between our soul and our spirit, and that that double-edged sword would begin to do its work, and that you would remove from us the things that need to be removed, and that you would reveal to us the things that need to be revealed, and that you would help us, Lord, to be honest with ourselves and to respond, to stop putting off what you desire for us today, to stop making excuses and say yes to your invitation today, right here and right now, in Jesus' name. Church, would you stand with me for worship? I invite you to come and to respond.